this is the section that you need to know absolutely. We're going to talk about quantum mechanics and how it's related to the atom. So we are going to be talking about the things that we call orbitals. Because according to the uncertainty principle, you can't know both um, the position and the velocity. So you have the particular region. So these particular regions that we had described, we call them or orbitals. So the orbital is actually defined as a probability distribution map that shows where an electron that has a specific energy, because remember Niels Bohr says they can only occupy certain energies. So this electron has a particular energy where it is most likely to be found. Now, what you can do is you can use the Schrodinger's equation to actually calculate these probability um, orbitals. We are not going to be doing that. Um, I actually didn't take a class advanced enough to do that to where I had to do it. I've seen it done. I do not want to do it. You definitely don't have to do it. But we will only be working with the solutions. So when you work with the solutions of the Schrodinger equation, you get four integers and they are a series of quantum numbers. So you, you don't need to know how you get there, but when you get these solutions, you, need, you have to know what they mean. So a quantum number is the equivalent to the address of um, a single particular electron. So you say this electron in the atom has this address. Okay, so there's four quantum numbers because there's four solutions for each um, Schrodinger equation. So the first one is called the principal quantum number. It is also called N. Now, the numbers that are allowed, the prince N can be any integer. So it cannot be a decimal integer. So it can be any integer that's greater than or equal to one. So it can't be zero. So it could be one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven. Those are the most common ones. That tells you how much actual energy. So that may call it, so you may call it the energy level. So a larger value has more energy. So four has more energy than three. Two has more energy than one. The next one is called the angular momentum quantum number. This is represented by an L. And because of my handwriting, I'm gonna write it as a cursive L. Now, that these L numbers, they can be, they go zero up to N minus one. So, that means you have to know N before you can figure out L. So you always start with N. So if N is one, it can be zero, two, one minus one is zero. So it can only be zero, all right? So it can be zero, but it, will ne it can never be higher than N. So, and what it determines is it actually determines the shape of the orbital. And if it is zero, that is called an S orbital. S stands for sphere. If it is, if um, this number is one, that corresponds to a P orbital, and that has a dumbbell shape. If the L number is two, that corresponds to a D orbital which has a crazy shape that I can't draw. And if it's three, that corresponds to an F orbital, which is even more complicated. Next, once you know N and you know L, you can calculate the magnetic quantum number, which the textbook says M sub L. You may hear me just refer to it as M, but 
Isabel is correct, but I learned it as um, M. All right, and so this goes from negative L to positive L. So again, if, if L is zero, we can't have negative zero to positive zero, you know. All right, but if it's one, it would go from negative one to one with all of the integers, no decimals. What it determines, it determines the orientation orientation of the orbital. So, if you have an L number that's 2, your possibilities of M are negative 2, negative 1. They go from negative L to positive L. So, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So, same thing if L is 3, negative 3, negative 2, on up. The last one, the book doesn't talk about this um, yet. But I do because it's important. Because when you solve Schrodinger's equation, you get four quantum numbers, and I think you need to know what all four of them are. The last one is called um, the spin quantum number, and it is m sub s, or you may hear me refer to it as just s. And this is easy because it's either positive one half or negative one half. That's it. And it tells you the orientation of the electron spin. Now, what the spin means is simply a direction or an orientation. So positive and negative don't mean anything other than direction, um, kind of like in thermochemistry. So spin. So that means... Um, uh, one electron does not have more or less spin than another. So they all have the same amount of spin. So it's they're all one half. They're either positive or negative. Now, let's talk about how to describe an orbital. This is a key skill that you must know how to do. So each set of n, l, and m sub l describes one particular orbital. So that's one address. Now, turn the page. Orbitals that have the same value of n are what we call in the same principal energy level. Orbitals that have the same value of N and L, so that they have to have two that match, the first two that match, they are in what is called the same sublevel. And the same sublevel may also be called a subshell. So if you look back and we said principal energy level of two, so here these have the same principal energy level, so that's a two, and L, when L is one, I said that corresponds to a P orbital there. It's gonna mean more in a little bit. So, so these are all two Ps, and then the rest doesn't matter. That's the orientation, so. Uh, you need to kind of know what these mean. So let's go through and let's practice with four principal energy levels. This is pretty much as high as we're going to go um, in this class. So when n equals one, for L, this is L, L can go from zero to n minus one. So that can go from zero to one minus one, which is zero. So zero is the only possibility. Our possibilities for m sub l are negative l to positive l. That's a zero. Can we have negative zero and positive zero? No, it's just zero. So we're gonna call this one s. Now, I'm gonna tell you, we're also gonna write over here that this is, there's one orbital here. Now, the total 
number of orbitals and each energy level is equal to n squared. So here, n equals 1, 1 squared equals 1. We have one possible orbital. Great, that's correct. Now, let's do it when n equals 2. L goes from 0 to 2 minus 1. So 0, and what's 2 minus 1? One? 1. Good. Let's go across, and next let's do m sub L. Can we have negative 0 to positive 0? No. So that's still 0. 1. Here we can have negative 1 to positive 1, so that would be negative 1, 0, positive 1. Alright, so this orbital is a 2, because that's its principal energy level, and the zeros, that means it's an S, because the L number tells you what its shape is, and there's only one of them. This next one, it's in principal energy level 2. An L number of 1 corresponds to a P orbital. And there are 1, 2, 3. So there are 3 of them. So let's talk about total. The rule says we should have N squared. So that's 4. And here we have 1 plus 3 and we have 4. So that's good. That's how it works. Next, for n equals 3, we can go with 0, 2, 3 minus 1. So 0, 1, what's 3 minus 1? 2. 0, 1, and 2. Now, let's carry these out. Again, they're going to look the same. Very similar. All right, so 0, negative 0 to positive 0, just 0. For m, negative 1 to positive 1. Negative 1, 0, positive 1. 2, we can go from negative 2 to positive 2. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2. Now let's give these names. Here we're in principal energy level 3, so it's a 3. The L num number of 0 corresponds to an S orbital, and there's only one of them. An L number of 1 corresponds to a P orbital, and there are 1, 2, 3 of them. An L number of 2 corresponds to a D orbital, and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of those. Our total should be equivalent to N squared. 3 squared is 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We did it right. Next. Let's do n equals 4. So we go from 0 to what is 4 minus 1? 3. 1, 2, 3. So here we're getting bigger. Negative 0 to positive 0? Just 0. Negative 1 to positive 1? Negative 1. 0, positive 1. 2, negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2. 3, negative 3 to positive 3. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. Now, if you need to flip back, that's fine. Do it. Here, we're in principal energy level 4. An L number of 0 corresponds to an S, and there's only one of them. Still in energy level 4, an L number of 1 corresponds to a P orbital, and there are 3 of them. Still in principal energy level 4, L number of 2 corresponds to a D orbital, and there are 5 of them. Still in principal energy level 4, an L number of 3 corresponds to an F orbital, and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 of those. Now, our total says we should have N squared, so that's 16, 
uh, 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 plus 5 is 9, 9 plus 7 is 16 possible orbitals. Alright, turn the page. So now look at these and figure out, this is a common, these are, these are ways that they like to ask test questions. Which one of these is possible? So remember the rules. So let's look at the first one. N. N equals three. There's not going to be a mistake with the ends. L can go from, from zero to N minus one. So it can be zero. M sub L goes from negative L to positive L. So remember this goes from zero to N minus one. M sub L goes from negative L to positive L. So that's okay. So that one's okay. Here, one, zero zero that's okay here we have two so we can go zero to one so that one's okay negative one to positive one that one's all right well it's got to be this one by process of elimination but let's check it anyway so four l can be zero to three okay so that's okay m sub l go can be negative one to positive one, there's the error. That one can only be negative one to positive one. 